I'm Craig Clunas, Professor of Art History, and I work on the art of China. So why am I standing in front of this portrait of Mademoiselle Klaus by the 19th century French artist Manet? Well, the big theme lying behind the display of the Ashmolean's collections is crossing continents, crossing time. But this breaks down a bit when it comes to painting. There are still quite separate galleries for European painting and for Chinese painting. They don't tend to get hung side by side. This is true not just of the Ashmolean, it'd be true of any museum in the world. Anyway, in 1929, the Chinese artist Xu Bei Hong, who'd studied himself for many years in Paris, wrote an essay called Doubts, and he said this in it. Despite the mediocrity of Manet, the vulgarity of Renoir, the superficiality of Cezanne, and the ugliness of Matisse, and all the evil of these opposing trends, they still managed with the help of art dealers' manipulation and propaganda to become the sensations of their time and dazzle the general public. So he's just dismissing all the great names of European modernism. And we might think, what a silly man. Doesn't he know these are the great artists whose work gets treasured in museums? Well, art history is like all history. It tends to get written by the winners. So it's worth remembering that in the late 1920s, this wasn't a totally weird idea that Cezanne, for instance, was no good. In 1928, the critic Roger Fry published a book on Cezanne. It got some violently critical reviews, lamming into Cezanne for destroying art, for promoting a cult of ugliness, and so on. Now, one of these reviews I've been looking at was published in the North China Herald. That's the main English language newspaper in Shanghai at this time. I'm not suggesting that Xu Bei Hong got the idea that Cezanne wasn't good from reading this newspaper, but what I am interested in is the way that by the 20th century we might stop thinking of Eastern art and Western art as two completely different things, when in fact the possibilities of travel and above all of reproductions in books and magazines mean it's just not like that anymore. It's increasingly possible to sit in Shanghai and argue about these things and be part of a global conversation. East is no longer totally East and West isn't completely West. China's art world in the 20s and 30s is full of arguments about how art is to be both Chinese and modern at the same time. It's a complicated story and one which isn't just about Eastern versus Western. I think one of the reasons Xu Bei Hong disliked Manet and Cezanne, modernism more generally, actually relates to some of the ways in which it looked to him to be more sort of Chinese than previous forms of realistic European art. At this time, people are beginning to argue that what painting is for, above all, is to express the subjective personality of the painter, how they felt about things and not just what they saw. Some people in China argued that they'd been doing this for centuries, that European modern art was just catching up with this emphasis on subjectivity. Xu Bei Hong, on the other hand, was looking for an art that was neither Eastern nor Western because it was based on forms of observation which were scientific, like perspective. And so they were possibilities which didn't have a regional affiliation. They belonged to all of humanity. And I just like the way the sheer range of stuff in the Ashmolean helps me to think about my one area.